Today, I'm going to tell you a story of a dream held so tightly, finally fulfilled more than two decades later. This is a story of that thing. Welcome to Get It Together, and if you're new here, this channel is just me trying to figure out how to get my life together and sharing the tips and lessons I learned along the way. As I really get into the swing of learning minimalism, the benefits of minimalist principles have revealed themselves really, really quickly. In a previous video, which I'll link right up here, I reduced my wardrobe by 200 items and I couldn't be happier with the simplicity it's brought to my life. At the tail end of that video, I mentioned that there was one more outfit that I decided to keep, but it means so much more to me than just clothing, and I'd love to share that story with you. Minimalism, to a newbie like myself, is often about identifying physical objects that don't serve a functional purpose in our lives and letting go of them. But some things, like this jacket, despite not having a necessary or frequent purpose, have a meaning so deep that letting go is unthinkable. I was in the fourth grade the first time I was exposed to hip-hop music. Now, prior to that, my title as a violin prodigy was assigned because my parents made me practice for hours and hours every single day, which pretty much meant that I didn't know there was such thing as anything outside of the classical violin music canon. I'm not gonna lie, looking back, I was pretty damn good. Here, take a look. Now, being nine or 10 years old, I still very clearly remember walking into HMV at Fairview Mall in Toronto with my dad to buy a six CD box set of a violin legend named Nathan Milstein. Looking back, I always laugh. My parents always seemed so cheap to me and my sister. You know, not many toys, no birthday parties, rarely dining out, but one suggestion from my violin teacher and Pops was ready to drop $100 on some box set of some old dude playing the violin. It's weird how you remember exactly where you were and what you were doing, when momentous events happen. Psychologists call this the flashbulb effect. Little did I know at the time, but that trip to HMV, that record store with my father, was a flashbulb memory in the making. Here's what I remember. It was a week or so before March break. My family was planning a road trip to the DMV. That's DC, Maryland, Virginia. Not Department of Motor Vehicles for anyone who got confused there. And we were gonna visit some old family friends. I was wearing my yellow sweatpants and my navy and white striped golf shirt an aunt from Alabama got me. I guess the fact that I remember the exact CD box set my dad was going to buy is proof enough of how vivid the memory is. Though I had never heard hip hop in my life up until that point, a quick Google search tells me that the Wu-Tang Clan's iconic album, 36 Chambers, had dropped the previous November, and the single, Can It Be All So Simple, released on February 22nd, 1994. And it was a week right after that single's release that Dad and I strolled into the record store. And the moment I heard that beat, I was grooving. I looked at the TV in the corner of the store above the rolls of posters for sale and realized the video playing matched the song. Yes, I literally didn't know there was such thing as music videos until that point. Now Raekwon, Raekwon's outfit sang to me. I had no idea polo sport was a thing to 90s hip hop heads. I didn't even know it was a polo sport piece. Hell, I was too young to even care about clothes at that age. All I remember was thinking it looked so cool and being secretly happy and proud that the outfit I was wearing at the mall was yellow and navy. And I double checked myself, hoping that I had some red on as well. The word snow beach made me chuckle. Introduction to poetry and rhetorical devices was on the English curriculum at that time. And those two words laced together, snow beach, made me wonder what kind of poetic rhetorical device was being used. Now it's not like I was an instant hip hop convert. My violin life kept me away from hip hop for a few more years, but that jacket stayed in my mind. I even copied its name in a poem that I wrote in the seventh grade about a family sitting outside after a snowfall, pretending they were on vacation. And of course I titled it Snow Beach. Fast forward through my introduction to true hip hop culture in the eighth grade, my abandonment of violin in favor of b-boying, breaking from around 15 through to university, and then one day, in the height of my obsession with sneakers, stormed perfectly with the growth of eBay, while I was two hours down an online window shopping rabbit hole, I found myself staring at my long lost love. The item description on eBay read, Polo Sport Snow Beach, lightly used, size extra large, great condition. Oh my God. Just as I was getting ready to celebrate, I felt my heart sink when I glanced at the buy it now price of over 3,000 US dollars. I had no idea until that eBay browsing moment in college that the Snow Beach jacket had become a cult classic, true hip hop lore. And that made me want it even more. It was like it was meant to be, that my very first exposure to hip hop was so clearly anchored in a, let's face it, by all accounts, pretty ugly piece of fashion. But it was so coveted by true hip hop heads for decades and for the past 10 to 15 years since that discovery, I've checked eBay every couple of months, hoping to find one at a reasonable price. 
always being disappointed with the ever-increasing asking prices of lucky owners. Upwards of $5,000 in not even good condition. Until 2018. Ralph Lauren released Snow Beach for the first time since its initial drop in 1993, and they released it in tremendously limited quantities. This is an obvious ploy that I've been used to as a sneakerhead. A ploy taken from sneaker brands who, for years, would drive up demand and desire, and I knew I was a sucker. But I didn't care. It had to be mine. And now, I've had this Snow Beach for over two years. I've just been looking at it, too scared to wear it out, and it's embarrassingly silly. Especially since I've been consciously moving away from things like this and embracing a life of minimalism when it comes to owning stuff in general. My dating app profile has this corny line, collector of memories, not things. But this, this right here, this Ralph Lauren Polo Sport Snow Beach happens to be one of the most important, incomplete memories of my life. Finally realized in full, at last, more than 20 years later, in the form of a thing. Now, if you've been with me for a minute, you know that over the past year, I've lost just about 60 pounds at this point. And this thing, this right here, this size large snow beach jacket does not fit. I'm swimming in it. And so I'm asking for everyone's help. Please, please, please share this with any sneaker heads, any hype beasts that you know. Or if you know somebody who works at head office for Polo, Ralph Lauren, and let them know that I'm looking for a size medium to trade for my size large. But regardless, if you got value out of this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. If you have any questions or want to debate anything, hit up the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.